The experiment we're going to do today is um, do watermelons float. So what we're going to do is follow the scientific method to do this experiment. And the scientific method um, uses a hypothesis and the experiments to prove the hypothesis, whether it was correct or incorrect. So your hypothesis is your guess as to whether or not a watermelon will float. But we're going to make guesses, hypotheses about a lot of different items today. So some of the items that we're going to see whether or not they float are a stapler, a watermelon, a ball, a, an egg, we've got a pencil, and we've got a can of soda. We're going to see which of these items float. First thing we're going to do is the stapler. We've got a stapler here. What do you think? Is it going to sink or is it going to float? You can see through this tub here. We're going to put it in here. And it sinks right to the bottom. All right, so if you put sink, um, your hypothesis was correct. So the next item is an empty water bottle. So we're going to take the empty water bottle, drop it in the tub, and you can see that the water bottle floats. All right. The next item is a pencil. This is a regular wooden pencil. So we're going to drop it into the tub. Can you see it? Here to the front. There you go. You can see it floating right there. So the pencil floats. Okay, the next item that we have is an egg. Now there's a little bit of tricky science with eggs. Um, one of the ways that you can tell if an egg is fresh or if it's old is whether or not it floats. So, fresh eggs will sink to the bottom. Eggs that are old or not fresh, they um, grow air pockets on the inside of the egg and they will float to the top. So we're going to drop this egg in and see if it floats or if it sinks. All right, so this egg is actually pretty old. It's been in our fridge for a little while. Um, so you can see that it dropped down, but it came right back up. All right, the next item that we have is a penny. So we're gonna see if the penny sinks or if it floats. Okay, the penny sinks to the bottom. All right, next we have a can of soda. This is an unopened can of soda. All right. So we have an unopened can of soda. We're going to see whether or not this item, it's fairly heavy, um, sinks or floats. Okay. You can see here that that item, the can of soda, the full can of soda that hasn't been opened, actually sinks to the bottom. Now it did bounce up a little bit, but it does settle right there on the bottom. Okay. All right, the next item that we have is a basketball. So this item is pretty big. Um, we're gonna see if it floats or if it sinks. basketball floats. All right, the last item that we have today is a watermelon. So this watermelon oh, is very heavy. We are going to see whether the watermelon sinks or if it floats. All right. So you can see here, the watermelon floats. It's bobbing up and down on the surface and it floats. So why does the watermelon float? That's what we're gonna talk about next. So the watermelon floated, but why? When we talk about things floating or sinking, we're actually talking about the density of that object and whether or not that object is buoyant. Buoyancy is the ability to float in water. So the power of the liquid lifts whatever item is on top of the water. So the power of the water lifts it. Now, 
whether or not it floats, whether or not the item is buoyant, is determined by its density. Density is the degree of compaction of a substance, so how dense it is. If you have a block of concrete, that's very, very dense. If you have a sponge, there's a lot of holes in it, there's a lot of air in it, that's not dense. So, sponges float, concrete sinks. The concrete is more dense than the water. The sponge is less dense than the water and therefore buoyant. But when we're talking about watermelons, watermelons are pretty dense, right? There's no holes in watermelons. There's no air pockets in the watermelon to make it float. So why did it float? Well, watermelons are actually 90% water. So when you talk about its density, it must be more dense than the water itself to sink. Watermelons are 90% water, so they have the same density as the water around it. This causes the watermelon to be able to float on top of the water, or as you saw in the tub of water, to kind of bounce on the top. They're just barely buoyant, but they're buoyant.